today on Be Something Wonderful. Make this one shift to create and manifest everything you want. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back and good morning from the studios of Be Something Wonderful here in Las Vegas. Big video today. I want to talk about this, Clyde. It, it was such a great session. He said, Tom, you know, I've watched video after video of yours. And, and a lot of your videos are about making this one shift. And we were joking about it, right? A little bit, because we're having fun with reality creation. He goes, now I finally know what you mean. He goes, I, I know now why you do so many videos. Because just like creation is finished, just like we've talked about that idea, that creation is finished in your experience of reality is seeing that creation, viewing that creation, experiencing that creation from a different vantage point or viewpoint or, or, or perspective. And that's what we're doing here. That's why the shift is always the same. But it, you can look at that shift from various viewpoints or perspectives. He goes, he goes, I really got it. And his big breakthrough for him that we discussed yesterday, he goes, I saw these videos on, now I really get the idea of, of what you mean by giving. Get the idea of what scripture means by giving, right? Stop focusing on getting and focus on giving. And this whole idea of forgiveness, we're going to get into these ideas today and take a look at them like we never have before, because that's what we do here at Be Something Wonderful. So remember, the end of all longing should be being. Neville Goddard says this, as well as all the other spiritual teachers say some variation of this, right? It's not about getting. That's what's really keeping you. Over and over again, we can say this, but it's your whole idea that you want to get something from reality. You, go, you want to get something from the world. You want to get something from others. You want to attract or manifest or create something from that world, that world that you believe is out there. It's about giving. It, and what are you giving? You're giving your awareness. You're giving your time. You're giving your attention to, to, to the reality that you want. It's about you giving reality, you creating the whole thing, you giving your awareness to the reality that you desire. We're going to talk about this idea. The end of wanting, complaining, and asking is being aware of already being that which you desire to be and having what you want to have. That's the end of longing. That's the end of waiting and complaining and asking, where is it? How long does it take? What's going on? Why am I seeing this? All those questions. It really is not about getting, attracting, or manifesting, or creating anything. Rather, it's about you giving reality, hear this, to the potential identity and reality already within you. You giving reality to that. Giving reality to the reality that's already within you. Do you hear what we're saying here? You giving it light and awareness and time and space and attention. Because that's all reality is. It's an experience. It's already within you. You're the one that gives it time, space, and attention to create this 3D physical experience. You're giving reality to the reality, ultimate reality, that's already within you. This is powerful today, so let's hit this idea. Stop trying to get something from reality or for something that you believe is out there. Instead, know yourself as source of reality. Know yourself as reality. You give, your, you give your world all the reality it has. That's what giving means. That's what the ancients meant. It's totally the giving of yourself. That's what surrender means. That's what all of these things mean. That's what forgiveness means. Right? Forgiving yourself for seeing, uh, for, for, giving, uh, for giving light to a reality that's not your desire, that's not your ideal. Right? God, infinity, the universe, infinite intelligence, the quantum field, whatever you want to call that, all that isness, that absolute power, that absolute reality, can't give you what you deny or don't give yourself. In other words, 
to know yourself as source, to give yourself to reality as reality, to know yourself as the absolute source of all that is. But, and, and this is what, um, again, a quote from the Gospel of Thomas, which I like to quote once in a while. This is Jesus' last teachings. But if you don't know yourselves, then you live in poverty and you are the poverty. Listen to that again. But if you don't know yourselves as source, if you don't give yourself as source, give yourself to reality as reality, you don't know yourselves, then you live in poverty. You are the poverty. In other words, you, your experience of reality is the one and only reality. That's what it's saying there in Gospel of Thomas. <clears throat> you, your experience is the only reality. So instead of trying to get something from somewhere out there, from some reality that you believe exists, give yourself as that reality. Give your time, space, and attention and awareness to that which you desire and want, and that is your reality. That's your experience. That becomes the whole thing. That's powerful. <laughs> trying to get, trying to manifest, trying to attract something from reality is what keeps you apart from that desired reality. Give reality to all that which you want and desire. You're the giver. You're not manifesting, creating, or getting, or attracting, or manipulating, or changing, or trying to get rid of anything. Give reality to all that you want. In other words, give your time, space, and attention, your awareness of being, to that ideal and preferred identity and reality that already exists within you. Getting is about trying to change, trying to influence, trying to manipulate, trying to fix, trying to get rid of something out there. That all keeps you apart from it because it's already within you. That's what Jesus, your I am awareness of being, was saying in Luke 6.38. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Neville Goddard quotes this quite a bit in his teachings. Give, and it will be given to you. In other words, give time, space, and attention to your ideal reality, and that will be your reality. <laughs> That will be your entire life experience. Give of yourself. Give your attention, your awareness, who you are to that entire reality. Right? That's what it's saying. Give your awareness, or in other words, your time, space, and attention to that which you want and desire to be, as opposed to something else out there that you believe exists, that you're trying to get over, that you're trying to fix or get rid of or manipulate or create or attract or, or change. Right? This is powerful today. How long do I have to wait? Those questions, right? Linear time, non-fulfillment. I need to get, I need to manifest, I need to receive, attract, or create something in time to be fulfilled. That's what you're saying. That I'm not fulfilled, I'm not in the realities are not within me, and I have to get something out there. How many times do I need to imagine, affirm, and persist in my end until I'm fulfilled, until I get what I want? It's all focused on getting something from reality versus giving reality to that which you want and desire that's already within you. That's why in Matthew 18, 21, 22, famous <laughs> verse in scripture, where the disciples ask, how often shall I forgive my, my brother who sins against me? And, and I forgive him up to seven times? And, I, and what is Jesus' answer, your I am awareness? I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And we've talked about the significance of what that means, those numbers, the alphanumeric meaning, right, in Hebrew of those numbers. We're going to talk about that again. But the true meaning of continual forgiveness of sin is to persist in and, and continually identify as your ideal version of yourself. That the sin is that not doing that. The sin is, it's not, it's missing your mark, meaning you not continually, you believing that you are those unwanted conditions. You identifying with what you don't want and saying, that's my reality. I don't know. How long do I have to wait to be who I want to be? How, how, how many times do I have to imagine or forgive or affirm or persist in the end until I get what I want? Well, it's continual forgiveness of sin. In other words, it's continually persisting in that new reality, in that new identity. That's who you are now. doesn't matter what the appearances are saying. That's why they don't matter. 
because they come from within you, your awareness. You give reality to reality, <laughs> right? So, so to persist and continually identify that ideal version, that's the spirit of Jesus that, that Neville Goddard talks about in his teachings. The spirit of Jesus is the continual forgiveness of sin, or in other words, continually identifying with your ideal, with your ideal reality, right? Your, that's your I am awareness, Jesus. The continual, the spirit of your I am awareness is the spirit of identifying, putting your attention, giving time, space, and attention to that which you want. It's a giving of yourself. It's not a getting of anything. Never got it on imagining and assuming you are already that which you desire to be, says this, to create in us the spirit this is what he's saying, what the purpose of imagining is, what the purpose of assuming your wish fulfilled, the purpose of a law of assumption, the purpose of already standing in that, in that knowing that you're already that person you want to be, that you already are all realities, to create in us the spirit of Jesus, which is continual forgiveness of sin, continual identification with your ideal, continual forgiveness for missing the mark, for, for identifying with those conditions, the continual, the, to create in, this, in us the spirit of that I am awareness. In other words, the giving of yourself completely to your new identity and reality. That's what surrender really means, right? It's not giving up your desire. On the contrary, it's totally embodying it, right? Only by doing this can you forgive yourself and others for having missed the mark or not identifying with your ideal reality and identity. Neville talks about this in his teachings. Only by identifying with your new identity continually, persisting in it, not from effort, but because that's who you are now. Because you know from this present moment who you and what you identify with is the only reality, past, present, and future. It's timeless. It defies linear time, right? It goes beyond it. You create who you were, who you will be, and who you are now. No matter what you're thinking, feeling or seeing in physical 3D reality, identify with that. That's the whole message of continual forgiveness of sin. It's the absolute giving of yourself fully, wholly, completely to that new identity and reality. A Course in Miracles says this about forgiveness. God never forgives because he never condemns. Forgive, in other words, what Course in Miracles says, forgiveness is something that, that you need in, in, uh, in your 3D experience, that's required in the 3D experience to release you from the illusion that you believe you are those conditions, that you are those changing thoughts and feelings, that you are those changing appearances. Remember, illusion means it's just not what it seems. There's a greater reality behind it. Forgiveness releases you from identifying with that which is not true of who you really are. That's what A Course in Miracles means. It's not true of who you really are. So, so, so God doesn't have to forgive you because he never condemns you for that, right? That it's not true of who, who you really are. You are God's son. You're the son of God. You are that I am awareness of being that enables you to give yourself completely to your ideal. That's what it means. Forgiveness releases you from the old you, from, that, from identifying with that which is not true of who you really are and enables you to give yourself completely to your new ideal. Wow. That's forgiveness and giving, what that really means. That's powerful. And in Hebrew, there's an, it's alphanumeric, right? The letters and the words have a numeric meaning or value. So we've covered this in other videos. I just want to touch on this again. 70 times 7 equals 490. Well, let's start there. Because Jesus says, I didn't say up to seven times. I said 70 times 7. Well, the alphanumeric meaning of that, the word, is tamen, which means complete, finished, perfect, whole, that it's done. It's divine. Right? It's that, that's what tamen means. So that's what Jesus is meaning. It doesn't mean do it 490 times. It means continual forgiveness of sin, continually persisting in and identifying as that ideal. Right? If you can't forgive, You'll always live an incomplete or imperfect life of not being your ideal. That's why, that's why you forgive others. You forgive yourself. That's the whole meaning. It's not for, for something that you believe is wrong with others or reality 
or that you did wrong or others. It's identifying that, that there is nothing wrong, that you're beyond that, that you are that divine being that I am awareness, that you can put your awareness on that which you want to be now. And you can change that past and you can change that future and you can change that present into what you are now, that, that now moment, the only moment that I am awareness. It is that if you can't forgive, you'll always live in complete or imperfect life. That's the meaning of that. So, you, so it's continually, you're continually forgiven, right? Because God never sees you as incomplete. God never sees you as, as living an imperfect life. That's what that means, right? Seventy is the word I in or I. And Neville got it, does a great job of covering these, right? I and I, that your physical eye leads to your true inner sight or your mind's eye. That behind those appearances, those physical appearances that you're seeing, is the true inner reality or that what your mind's eye sees. And that's fixed. That 70 is fixed to the number seven. Mean, and, and, and remember the number that, that the, uh, the times here, or it means to fix it, or the sword. It, 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 the number seven means Zion or sword. The, the, the time sign means to fix it. So 70 iron, seven Zion, and the times or 70 times seven means to fix that eye to the sword. And remember, there's a paradoxical meaning to that word sword. It also means, it also leads to sustenance or sustaining or the Sabbath or peace or rest. So that idea of the 70 times seven, the eye fixing to the sword means it leads to absolute fulfillment. It leads to absolute sustenance. It leads to you sustaining that state of peace, fulfillment, or the Sabbath. So you imagine, you assume, you persist, continual forgiveness of sin until the eye is fixed as though it is nailed with the sword. In other words, that leads... That leads to that rest or fulfillment or to you being fulfilled, you being complete, finished, and whole. That's powerful. We talked about that idea. So that was Jesus. That was the message of Jesus, right? 70 times 7 means it's continual, that that's who you really are, that ideal. So persist in that. Persist in your perfection. Persist in that wholeness that it's done. A Course in Miracles continues to say, what is sin? except the false idea about God's son. So there it is. That's why God never condemns, because that's a false idea. Forgiveness is really, really taking what is false, right? And knowing that is false and moving to the truth of who you really are, right? Releasing. Forgiveness is releasing the false idea, hear this, of who you really are. And then giving of yourself to that idea of who you really are. That's forgiveness, right? Your I am awareness of being. What is sin except a false idea about God's son? So it's about releasing any false ideas, any realities, any experiences, any appearances, any thoughts and feelings that don't align with that, that absolute divinity that you are is, is a false idea about who you are. You are who you say you are, who you assume you are, and assume your ideal, because that's the truth. When we assume anything less than that, it doesn't feel good. Because remember, that's source energy telling you that you're filtering that idea of who you are through, through a false idea, through a false assumption, a false belief of who you really are. And then it doesn't feel good. Your source, that's complete bliss, that feels, that, that is the feeling of absolute love and peace that passes all understanding, feels like something else when we, when we hold on to those false ideas of who we are. So forgiveness is the release of that in the giving of yourself to that ideal of who you really are, your desired end, your imagined reality. So any wanting, any waiting, any longing, to get something from reality or the world is a false idea of who you really are. This is what my client really got, right? He goes, he goes, that idea of giving, he goes, I get it. I've been trying to get, 
because he's manifested some great things as well, right? And, and, but he goes, it always felt like I'm trying to get something, trying to change something. I'm trying to fix something. I'm trying to manipulate or manage reality as opposed to being that reality, as opposed to giving reality to what I want. So forgiveness of sin is about releasing yourself from identifying with the changing conditions, those changing appearances, that false idea of who you are to the truth of who you really are. Wow. Making your imagined end, your ideal identity, your preferred reality, your only reality. It's the giving of yourself completely to your ideal, no matter what. That's powerful. That's the one shift. It really is, right? As we said it before, that's why it was such a fun conversation. That's the one shift to manifest and create everything you want. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, for joining our TikTok at Tom Karen. We also have a Facebook organization page at Be Something Wonderful. We have like 101,000 people who have liked that page or follow that page. So follow that. Also, uh, join us on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel where there's additional content. And this Saturday, there's another live stream, our second live stream of the year on Saturday, February 25th, 2024 at 9 a.m. in the morning. Pacific Coast Standard Time, right here from Las Vegas. I'm going to be coming to you live, talking about the topics that you've been sending me, some of the questions you've been asking. Some of you have said there were questions I asked before. Remember, we're going to hit all those questions either in a video or on the live stream, but for sure, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff uh, this Saturday, as we always do, and we're going to have a lot of fun. If you're a member, tune in. If you're not a member, tune in. <laughs> There's a link below if you want to check it out. Creators, with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude. This is Tom here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time, we'll see you soon.